Hey coach, so happy you found us. A uh, couple things. First of all, make sure you go over and subscribe and like. We love those. Second thing is go over and check out teachups.com for coaches who want to get better. It's the one-stop shop for basketball coaches. It's a community of like-minded coaches. We just got off an hour and a half call just talking basketball. Come over and join us. There's nothing else like it on the market. It's got everything you need to win more games in less time. Come over and check out teachups.com. Let's head off to the video. All right, welcome to High School Hoops. Hi, Jake. How are you? Hi. Um, I'm fantastic. <laughs> we were talking for like about 15 minutes. We always have our, our daily conversation. We always do our, our monthly catch-up when monthly, we yeah. do this. Uh, before we jump in, I'd like to do a big, big shout-out to our two sponsors, Dr. Dish, the number one shooting machine on the market. Mention three, mention Coach Unplugged, High School Hoops, Coach Stagers, Coach Collins, whatever you need to mention, they'll give you $350 off. And then um, we'll go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. The one-stop shop for basketball coaches. Nothing else like it. Yes, that's the softest sell ever. If it's September and you're not thinking about your team, and you're not, that's your that's your issue. That's not my issue, to be honest with you. Because I'm like obsessing about my team. But um, so, all right. So what I thought we'd talk about today was building a successful program. Now, Coach, we could talk about this for probably an hour and a half, but as we said in our pre, our pre um, podcast, coach has got to go get a shingle shot and his PSA test is in. in Not me, hours. Steve. I'm Steve has to. You you, yeah, you're too young to have the shingle shot, and yes. you should always have your PSA every physical. Okay. So PSA is a number. So here I'm gonna I'm gonna give a I'm gonna give community service here to the, all the high school hoopers. PSA is a number which basically checks your prostate um, for the possibility of prostate cancer. Most most men that are listening to this, if you live long enough, you'll probably get prostate cancer. The key to that number is that that number increases rapidly. Um, they also do a, a, a check um, to make sure you're, because a lot of people have an enlarged prostate. That's, that's why people get up at night and pee. Um, anyway, so if your number is like 2222222212, then that's a problem and then they check it and then it's a slow moving relatively slow moving cancer and then they take it out so mine has been pretty consistent between two and five last one was five so they're a little like ooh, it's a little elevated so that we're gonna go back and do a secondary test to see and then if so then i'll have to go see somebody rather than do a virtual physical anyway there's your community service for all the people so if you're if, when you go to have your physical old men Make sure that you find out your PSA. All right. So building a successful program. Like I said, this could be a deep dive. Um, oh, this could be a whole year conversation. So I, I sent some notes to, to Jake and we're going to go off those notes. So the first one I wrote down was do something. Di and I talked to a coach. I think it was Coach Long from Tennessee yesterday. And he's do something different offensively and defensively than other teams in your league. I'm a <laughs> coach and I are in Wisconsin. If you know anything about Wisconsin, pack line, man to man defense is like, I wouldn't say it was born here, but oh my gosh, with the Bennett's and then Bo Ryan and stuff. So I think you have to have different things inside of your tool chest to, to, to help your team. And if you only do like, I, you go to some of these clinics, they go, we're going to be the pack line man defensive team. And we are going to lean into that. And that's all we're going to do. Okay. What happens when I figure your man out? Then what? <laughs> you don't have, you don't have an alternative at that point. I'm not saying that can't be your, I'm going to run this 80% of the time. I'm just saying, I think you need more things offensively and defensively when things aren't going well, if you want to build a successful program, if you only lean into one thing, can you do it? Yes. But I think the really successful programs have multiple things that they are good at. Thoughts coach. Um, when you talk about that, I, I think from the teams that I've coached and, and worked with, I think when you can choose something with an offense and defense that's adaptive and make small changes with it, yeah. Um, that's really successful um, because you can do variations of the flex or you can do variations of uh, a motion offense and you can do changes out of it. I think one thing that coaches and young coaches do, they try to do one thing in fidelity or try to do a million things. And really they choose a structure, which is really successful for them. 
and they add layers to it. You could do that with what was up? What's the big offense you've been re- working with? With read, read, read and react, react right? Yeah. You add layers to it. You add layers to your different zones that you do. So I think it's really important to try to find two or three things that are going to be your staples. And then we talk about, we use the word stable a lot too. Um, and then add layers to it. Like if yeah. you're going to run a ball screen offense, there's, you know, a uh, ball. When I used to run some ball screen offense uh, in, uh, at the college, we had different layers to it where different cuts were different at different uh, times, different screen elements. And I think then your players are able to really have that structure that allows them to play the game of basketball and make decisions on their own. But also coach talked about this idea of what happens when things break down, having those small little layers could be this, the wrinkle that you need to beat that team instead of saying, well, if this doesn't work, I'm going to go all the way to the other end. Cause right, I don't right. think you necessarily need that. You, need, you don't need to do extreme. So I, I think there's a couple, does that things. make sense, Steve or no? Yeah. So a couple of things, um, deep diving into that. Um, I think you want to have things obviously that correlate offensively and defensively in terms of pace of play, but I, I agree small tweaks. Now don't do like coach Collins and, and come up with a new defense and a new offense, which I will be releasing to the world soon. That's a tease, especially the defense. I think I'm releasing the defense has already been released. So if you want to send me an email, I might be talking about the funnel. I am talking about the funnel. That's anyway. funny because uh, I've been t- I've been using the word funnel all the time coaching soccer this year. I'm starting this new formation. <laughs> yeah, and it's all about funnel, funnel, funnel. Okay. But it's a little bit different than your funnel. But I'll, I'll send you the logo. But anyway, don't, <laughs> do, don't do that because it's this is like a five year process to get this to where it is today. Um, so don't do that. There's enough good stuff out there that you can grab something, and then as you as you become more experienced and, and along the route, then you can do your own thing. I, I, that would be my advice for the youngsters. Um, all right. So let's, let's keep moving. Cause we keep, <laughs> we spend that long on one, on one topic. We will be here for, we could end up, we could focus on two or three topics and then go back to the next week too. I mean, we could, that, that, that could be an option too. Steve. Yeah, it's we up to you. Do that. We could do sometimes, that. sometimes, you know, the, uh, you, you don't want to going. Yeah, but I also think that the things that we just said are so extremable to our listeners yeah, that so it's let's okay. Do, let's do let's do the first three, and then what we'll do is we'll come back next week and do the next three, and then and that's just good coaching. Yeah. That's just good coaching and good teaching modeling, right, for us. And then and then and then people that are listening, if you have something that you think is uh, integral in building um, a successful program. Um, or we'd want to share it on our podcast or a coach unplug podcast, one of my other ones, uh, email me at Steve at teach hoops.com and, and we'll talk. That would be, that would be fun. Um, all right. So the next one I wrote down was, um, work to make better players. Okay. <laughs> not plays, not offenses. Um, you know, I, I think that's an important one. Um, you know, teaching, you and I are both teachers. I think teaching in the end, we're both teachers um, and we're also coaches, but we're teachers. Um, and that, you know, how, how can I make Johnny better? And then how can I make Davion better is different. Um, and I think as, as teachers, we know that. And we, <laughs> we, I'm going to use an, I'm going to use an educational lingo. I'm going to scaffold for those specific uh, athletes or students. Um, but I think it's important because, you know, a, co- a good coach can teach specific things in different ways to different kids. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in this small sided game thing or this one specific drill or whatever it is. And we're not thinking, we're not thinking about the person behind the teaching and how they can how they can get better not only as a basketball player but as a person um, I think is really important so I think my next thing if you're going to build a successful program the players have to know that in your bet their best interest in your best interest you're just trying to make them better you're trying to you're trying to make that 11th man better than the 10th man or whatever it is I, I mean I'm just arbitrarily picking numbers here but um that you can do that and make them better. And I think that will lead into to our next to our next point here. I would say that next. the more and more and I have talked to you over the years is you could even funnel that down and start thinking about fundamentals comes down to decreasing possessions. Okay, so so that's number two. So I think so that's number three. So this is perfect. That fundamental thing is leading into our next point. 
I think right. But when I'm talking, be- when you're talking about making kids better, it really comes down to the game of basketball about possessions. Okay, so when you focus on the little things that you talk about player development, like let's just talk about defensive techniques and rebounding from a defensive or standpoint. Footwork, footwork. But again, footwork. right? If those things get better, then you are eliminating possessions for the opponent. If you get better at passing, ball handling, and shooting, you are maximizing your possessions from an offensive standpoint and breaking the game down. And what really comes down to it is how can I limit possessions for one team and how can I maximize others? And it really starts down with the nitty gritty work of getting better individually. And so I just, I want to put that in context of like the game. Oh, how can we get better at such a big thing? But really it is, if I increase those skills, I'm going to be able to maximize my possessions and I'm going to be able to minimize the opponent's possessions. And that's what it comes down to. And right. Think, How good you that, can do those things. Yep. And I think what I think that what that leads into, too, is I think um, we want to make them better. But then if we think if we think we want to make each individual player better, but then we also have to think about how we can do that as a program. Um, and that's what we what you said. And that was the first sentence you came out with is be fundamentally sound in your program. Have, have a language, have something, have a, I don't want to refer to, you know, religion, but have a Bible that, that your program has that everyone knows that this is how we teach screens. This is, this is our lingo on ball screens. This is our lingo on defense. This is how we refer to midline or helpline, those kind of things. So you, you have to be fundamentally sound within a program to be successful. <laughs> Especially now at the game, like I think often kids are hindered by we try to put kids in positions at such a young age. That tall kid, every kid yeah. needs to learn how to dribble. Every kid needs to learn how to pass. Yeah. And and just look at look at our <laughs> look at the box. Look at Giannis. Okay, like he's almost needs to he's reverting back where he's learning how to play his back to the basket now, and he's right. realizing wow, I can even be more dominant, right? right? And so like if you can add all those elements to each kid on your team. Like, yeah. don't look at them as how can I make this post player fundamentally sound a post? How can I make each basketball player fundamentally sound in all the elements of the game? Yep. And the, so what I think what I think people have to think about, too, is. And this is going to I'm not ripping on people that do stuff like right now, but the small sided game thing is this huge emphasis right now. And it's important. And I do it. And it's a huge part of my. Pri- but I, I can't give a, a, a second grader. A, a bunch of uh, addition or multiplication things that they have not learned the basics before that or the fundamentals. So I think, I think the shift with this, this small sided game shift is great. And I've done it for 30 years, just didn't have a name for it, but it's gotten so bad that like, great. Yeah. You can throw them out there, but before you get to that step, you have to teach them. You have to do a deep dive. Like if I'm doing a new defense, I'm going to spend, 30 minutes teaching them that speci- the, the nuances of it, then I'm going to put them in, you know, things that are going to teach them those specific skills. That's where the fundamental thing is, is you can't just, you know, here's how you pivot and then, you know, small side game. Well, no, because they're going to do it wrong. And you and I as teachers know if, some, if someone does something wrong the first time, it takes like eight times of doing it correctly to undo that mess muscle memory. So, I think, especially for the young coaches, they get on the web and they see the small side game stuff and they see all this. Great. The science behind it is, is, is very good. That, that's how ki- kids do need to learn those specific things. They also need to learn some basics or fundamentals. Like you need to learn how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide before you can do calculus. Sorry to break it to you. You can't do calculus. You can't add. You need some fundamentals before you get to the big picture stuff. I guess when we talk about youth, and I've been working with youth a lot at for years with, at, as a varsity head coach and work with younger teams and as a soccer coach, it's about sprinkling it in. So, like, yeah. you don't do fundamentals for 25 minutes. No. You do fundamentals for five minutes on a skill, and maybe you do that small sided for 10. Right. You don't go fundamental, 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 fundamental. You got to sprinkle it. In. And that's, again, we've always talked about constrict practice planning yeah. right it's an art form dude it is an art right. form. and the thing is you don't give your kids ice cream for dinner you also don't only give them broccoli for dinner right like that's the best way i can do you don't you you do give them a, you give them 
uh, you know, a colorful plate of food, hopefully. Right. So you just yeah. think, how can I put, oh, I'm going to do five minutes of passing here, and then I'm going to do a small side of game that has a lot of emphasis in passing. All right. Then I'm going to work on dribbling. What could I do with dribbling? Right. And that's the key. And you're never going to get kids, I think, angry about doing fundamentals because if you do the small little things in the beginning, they have more success at the small side. Once you have more success at the small side of game, you're going to have more success on the 5v5. Well, and I hate to break it to the coaches. The small side of the game is the ice cream because they love playing. Yes. And the, and, the, and, the, and the fundamentals are the vegetables. Like, they don't love those. Like, they do them. They know they have to do them. So you have to, you have to be creative in that, and that's a whole different podcast. Yeah, that's another thing we're talking about, about how to make – Fundamental drills, competitive, yeah. um, how to learn we'll how to be do, competitive. We'll, we'll, we'll do that in October when people. Um, let me, I'm going to write this down because that that's is, a good coach. Uh, coach how, is scrambling for those of you who are listening right now. He's trying to grab, he's got everything within reach because of virtual learning. So he's trying to grab something, but that would be, I think October, to be honest with you, I think October is going to be our deep dive into um, kind Excellent. of building. Yeah. Building that practice. How do we do it? What goes into building that practice? How, I think that will be a good deep. Dive. Like a little, we could do a whole whole top- month on that. We'll do a whole yeah, month but like on one that. whole topic on how to make basic drills competitive and fun. Fun, okay. You can so make it fun. I guarantee you. For for those of you listening to podcast, that's a tease podcast. That's like it's coming in October. Make sure you got it in. Because I got a bunch. Of, I got a bunch of ideas for all ages that you yep. could Coach use. And in I your- would love if you left some five star reviews. If you're li- if you're liking these, just go in. Go to iTunes, so, scroll down, and uh, stars. Oh, yeah, you can leave a review. We'd love to read all your reviews. How to make broccoli tasty. Got it. <laughs> all right, till next week, Coach. Hey, Coach, I'm glad you're liking the video. Hit like down below. That helps us a ton being found on YouTube. Subscribe. Also, hit the little bell up above if you want to get notified. We put a new video up every day. We're breaking some of the great stuff down right now. Also, go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better.